Two marker. What is going on, everybody? What's going on, Alamo City Movie Talk fans? As always, I'm your host, Ryan D. A. Killer Ryan 680. And this is Lex, back at it again with more reviews. Back at it again, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not already, like, share, subscribe. Hit that subscribe notification to get notified for our movie reviews, or in this case, TV review, guys. Let's get right to it. Lex, what are we reviewing today? We are reviewing one of the best shows out there. Uh, wholesome, positive, uh, emotional all around. And it's about football as well. Some people, yeah. sometimes people forget, but it's uh, Tet Lasso. Ted Lasso, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about Ted Lasso final season, guys, ladies and gentlemen. I kind of feel like everything's ending. We got Succession ending. We got Barry ending. I mean, so many, sh so many fantastic shows are ending. It's sad. It's a sad, sad year because a lot of shows that go over and go go really good with my heart, especially this one. It just it's it sucks. It really does because you know without Ted Lasso, you know you got to be the Ted Lasso in the world. That's all I'm saying. You got to yeah. be the tail asshole. But uh, yeah, Lex, I mean, let's talk about this. Uh, we're talking about episode one, guys, here at the Almost City Movie Talk Studios. And, you know, the way this episode started, it was actually very, uh, it, it was a very tail asshole feel where we kind of left off in the last episode, grounding out how the season's going to feel. Because, you know, the last, you know, season one, I felt like for me, or uh, in the episodes one of the past two seasons, they've always had that because I'm rewatching it. They always have that first episode where it kind of grounds like, oh, snap, this is going to happen. Oh, maybe this will change. And it's weird to say, and I love this, though. I love it because TV shows should all do this all around because every first episode or every you know, of a new season should not feel the same. Or at least maybe maybe sometimes they do in a good way. But. I kind of felt like in this with this show, it kind of escalated a different, more emotional aspect in here. A little bit different and more uh, different emotions with Ted Lasso in here. I mean, because we knew the it's a high stake season for the football club and for Ted Lasso. But uh, Lex, what you uh, what you think of this uh, episode one, man? Yeah, no, like you said, I mean, it lays the groundwork the groundwork and um it lets us i mean most of the first episodes of these seasons it lets us know where the characters are at right and season one it introduced them of course because it's a new world it's a new um group of characters and you're starting to find out how their dynamics are going to play out now they're well established they have relationships with one another um mm. and to an extent you know what to expect but you know yeah. a lot of the you know the show despite not always focusing around football, it treats itself like a football season, right? And so we always yeah. meet them at the point in which the season's starting. So there was a good chunk of time where these characters did their own things, their their relationships developed. And so what this episode does effectively, just like it's done so in the past for the first episode, is just letting us know where they're at and planting the seeds for what can then go ahead and develop throughout the later part of the season. Um, maybe there's some things here that that were planted that we don't know yeah. it's going to be a bigger thing, but it eases us in. There's not like a ton of like big top drama happening. It's just once again, letting us know where these characters are at. It's super exciting. Yeah. There's actually some characters in here that like, I was surprised that weren't, they were just kind of in the background. And, yeah, and, exactly. and I, I think that's just part of like acknowledging, Hey, we understand uh, there's a lot of characters here, a yeah. lot of characters that we love but we need to take our time in, in letting you know where the core people are at. Yeah. You know, uh, I have to agree with you there. I, I, you know, this was, this was definitely a more intuitive to where, you know, just, just how we left off. And I just, this episode one is called smells, uh, smells like a mean spirit. And I kind of feel like that, that makes sense here. I, I can feel that because it kind of, it kind of makes sense to where what kind of uh, what kind of tone in this case, what kind of spirit, right? That they're trying to give out here, and what also just how everything flows together. How this episode really flows in its own, without mentioning these spoilers, right? I mean, it just this episode really flows on its own, right? We see Nate again. We see, every, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of the same characters. Pretty much, we're seeing everybody. I would say we see everybody in this episode. Uh, I mean that that's like that's not a spoiler because we expect to see everybody, right? I mean, yeah, uh, you know, we see we see every single character here take off new hairstyles. We see new different hairstyles, which I like though. I like I actually I am digging the hair on most of these people. Granted, we we've seen some of the hairstyles in the photos itself. They we really do, but Jamie is probably one that kind of like uh he's a little 
his hair is just like it just i just didn't like his hair he's the only one you know you see danny and his hair just looks yeah, I mean, Danny's that's the, hair is always on point. Do you hair Danny's hair? I want to I want to know what he uses because that hair is just so beautifully shining. And it's, it's yeah, it, it looks really it, beautiful. Yeah, I saw I saw an interview of him, Cristo Fernandez on TikTok recently. Yeah, and, um, they he, like on the comments. It was funny because people were like, um, like, so I, I don't know if it's ladies or just like men generally, like people just were commenting like that. That's like, he, he's so beautiful. Like he's, he's a, cause of the hair and like, you know, um, he has a really nice smile and all those things. So like, it was just funny, but like people were commenting about his hair all the time and saying like, yeah. it's so perfect. He's such a pretty man, like all those things. And so, yeah. yeah. And, and honestly, I've always been a big fan of, of uh, Trent Krim's hair too. He has, he has a nice nice hairstyle um, yeah i, I just gray hair and all that stuff yeah i mean i don't know if it's the journalism in him or i don't know what's going on but yeah you know we we get a little bit of uh um a little bit of under uh taking here in this episode more of uh you know roy we, we, we get every, i mean everybody in here and yeah, i like that because we get yeah let it, letting us know where everyone's at without really focusing you know it's still the show's called ted lasso right so yeah shows about uh, it talks about uh ted a lot i i like you know without spoilers there's an undergoing theme here uh on the episode you know that goes back to the you know the idea of like you know is being nice always like the the thing the to best do, thing right? like there's yeah. there's you know in, in the show you know it's around football right so mm. there's competition and yeah. should at any point like sacrifice our our like way of looking at life for a little bit of competitiveness or a little bit of yeah. like fighting right and i don't so want to like that yeah thing. i don't want to say it's dignity but i guess in a weird way it is uh, i guess somewhat uh maybe in in that realm here yeah I mean, just like yeah. protecting yeah 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 like yeah <clears throat> yeah not letting people walk over you and things like that and it, it, it's a really good theme around this start of the episode because it it, it loops back right like yeah I, I found it interesting that some characters were frustrated about how uh, a certain individual deals with something yeah and, and it's like well that's that's the way that they do things right mm -hmm. so yeah. uh, once again i don't want to break it down too too much but just know that the theme of this episode is still what we love it's, it's strong there's a lesson in here yes uh, and also just one quick mention a lot of people are going to recognize this but nike and and Dude. Lasso, they paid them Dude. up because the logo is everywhere so on the screen yeah yeah well what you know we could see a lot of it in the in the um in the photos here and everything so like there's actually i think it was this it's not this oh yeah so the thing that roy roy kent is wearing right here uh this actually the it, you can't fully see it because it's still right unveiled yet it's, like it's not unveiled navy. yet it's like a yeah. dark it, navy th with that like that shirt and, and it's funny to you because lex brought it up when we, were, we, we got to see it early right uh thank you apple tv we got to see it early and you know, Lex bought this up. It's like, hey, check out Roy's shirt. You know, Roy. I was like, what? And then so I start looking at it, and then we see more of it in the episodes. And we're like, there's I'm all like, holy, suits, yeah, the dude. There's Nike pants. logos everywhere. Yeah, I just, dude. I, they haven't Bro. announced if they're gonna sell it or not. I, I hope know. that by the time that you guys are watching this, they they the, confirm. They release. They release shoes. But I want shoes. I, I just, want I shoes. Just want like a nice hoodie or like a jacket. And granted, there is Ted Lasso merch out there. There really um, is, yeah. There's there's fan merch, and then there's also like official merch by Warner Brothers because they have the the yeah. rights and things like that. I just want all the nike stuff that they're wearing. I just yeah. want to rock it. Like it's Same so here. clean. But I, I know it's gonna be like like seventy dollars for like some shorts or something like that I dude already... i believe it man it's gonna probably be like eighty dollars for that hoodie that nice hoodie the nice clean hoodie more than likely that's probably what's gonna happen but all right guys uh overall lex what do you think of this episode rating one out of ten ten being the highest what do you think of this episode uh i want to give this episode uh an eight i think uh, it nice. did what it, it, don't get me wrong it's solid episode like yeah. Ted lasso eight just means that yeah. i know there's gonna be some tens throughout the season but um yeah all around great great start i was smiling from like just seeing these characters yeah. again it just had me smiling yeah you know this episode took a turn uh it, it just it's weird how this show can really throw a curveball at you you know in, in, in a way to where the, you think the story's gonna go this way but it totally goes a different direction here. I felt that way with this episode. I felt that way with the last episode. I mean, I felt that way with 
almost every episode, almost not every single episode, right? Not every single episode is yeah. perfect, but for me, I'm gonna have to give you know, I'm gonna have to give this a solid uh 8.5 just because we get a little bit of Nate development here. Oh, yeah, and I'm gonna be calling that a lot. We're gonna call that Nate, I'm gonna call it Nate development because it's something very different that we've never gotten of Nate in the last two seasons. Something that's very different. Granted, Nate's come a long way. He's had a huge, I mean, with he's had a huge character development. And this is a show that I can really honestly say that every single episode, every I mean, every single character has had development. Every single character is not the same as who they once were. Like it's it's so revealing. It's so great to know that this show took character and and just like each single character has some kind of input in there. Even, um, you know, even the bus driver, even the bus driver, Richmond. I mean, every single it feels like that way with every single character, the fans of Richmond. We got season two. We saw yeah. the fans of Richmond step on the field. That was yeah, poetic. That was fantastic. I mean, Ted Lasso did that for our uh, uh, it wasn't Ted Lasso. I'm sorry. Um, it was Coach Beard. He Coach did that Beard. for them. Yeah, yeah he, he did yeah. that for him on even Coach Beard his own episode. It's crazy to see all this development happening it's so beautiful it's so magnificent I i'm loving this show so i'm gonna give it a solid 8.5 uh because we got a little bit more of nate being the the evil nate or the 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 rupert nate we'll say this because we know this not a spoiler guys he is with rupert now even though rupert treated him like shit even though he treated him like he was a no he was a nobody you know, and 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 you know, last two well, seasons. Well, Rupert never treated him like. Or you mean? No, no. Well, like he wasn't known under Rupert's oh, ownership. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. he, yeah, like Rupert, yeah. Like if it wasn't for Ted, we would not get. You know. No, I get. Yeah. I get what you're saying. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And, I, and now that yeah. I think about it, Nate was probably there for a couple years before. Yeah, he yeah. was there for probably longer than that. You know, and he they got treated like said, crap. But yeah, no, oh, but he got treated like crap. Jamie yeah. Tart treated all the players were just yeah, like the whole Ted Lasso. Ted Lass was the one that said, show him respect. I yeah. expect everyone to show him respect as much as me. And that's the thing that gets me ticked off that it's just like, wow, Nate, you did that. Wow. Yeah. Nate the Great went evil. That's all I'm saying. Nate the Great went evil. But all right, guys, now we're going to talk about spoilers, ladies and gentlemen. Spoilers. So if you have not seen episode one, if you have not seen episode one, I will mark the timestamp on here, by the way, guys, on the spoilers. So we are not mentioning spoilers until the timestamp will mark. So, guys. Fair warning. Spoilers. Spoilers. Let's say spoilers. Spoilers. Go watch spoilers. the episode. Go watch the episode, guys. But if you do not care like me, because a lot of times I really don't, because um, I like to watch it versus someone talking about it. That's just me. Uh, but, you know, as some, some people do, obviously, and some people don't. But, hey, to each his own. But we're letting you know right now, spoilers, guys. But let's get right to it, Lex. Let's talk about the spoilers that we saw here. We see Ted Lasso really struggle in himself. The in He's so intuitive of, is he emotionally stable? Is he emotionally stable? Because we get to, we get to see him on, on the airport where they were calling his son a few times, and he didn't even acknowledge it. He, he it was like lost in his own train of thought here. Uh, kind of like what we left off with him last season. Where like he, you know, it, uh, where he had a panic attack, he anxieties through the roof because, and we get a little bit more of it because he doesn't really say any. He he holds everything in. You know, we hear that saying, you know, better out than in, right? When it comes to farts and all that, better out than in. We usually hear that saying, and in this case here, when it comes down to you know just in, having your feelings presented in a way it kind of just builds up in a bottle he keeps putting everything in a bottle here and we saw that really escalate last episode or l last season yeah um, but but yeah. we do see you know in this episode it's hard saying goodbye to your to your son i imagine yeah after, like I'm, I'm assuming he spent there like the summer yes or whatnot. but you're you're right we see i think i think what's apparent is that ted is still struggling and that's part of life right like that's yeah that's all of us like th the things don't yeah. go away but at the same time you see the progress in him he still has an yeah. established relationship with dr sharon who makes an mm -hmm. appearance in the fact that ted still talks to her not only as you know friends to an extent but he is but professionally, like, paying her yeah like professionally yeah he's still yeah. consulting her he's still uh she's still his therapist right mm -hmm. and so we see that transition from last 
season where Ted just didn't want anything to do with therapists just because he, he didn't believe it. And he also believed that he could be there for other people and, and that they didn't need a therapist. Right. So we see yeah. that change in here, which I, I, really I think like. it was, I think it was more of a grudge because what his wife did to him with the therapist, with the therapist yeah. that they had. Uh, and, and, and I get it. And then also we have to understand too, he's going through a divorce. I mean, he already, it's the divorce is finally already, over. It's, yeah. yeah. It's already done sealed. But last season he was going through a divorce. And, uh, I mean, that's not, that's not ever, I mean, no, I'm not going to lie. You know, I, you know, it's not easy at all. N never. It never is. Right. It never is easy to go through a divorce. So I, I, at that point in time, I was like, you need to talk to somebody. Um, and you know, and she was already at Richmond. So, but going to this episode here, you know, I kind of like, and love the goofy joke we got here at the beginning of this episode where, where he's like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. You know, he was, uh, trying Mario and trying to rescue peach. Uh, trying to use Mario to rescue Peach or something, and then and then she's like, "Oh yeah, I I once stopped a plane because I was trying to beat this level on this game and everything." I thought that was pretty funny. That was a little charming there. Uh, we get the little the little Ted Lasso charm, man. The little Ted Lasso jokes. I love that. Uh, and then also we see the therapist actually not at Richmond anymore. She's somewhere yeah. else. And yeah, she's, she's just kind of doing like remote stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh. You know, I, I kind of so we we see that escalate there. We see we see Ted kind of feels more lonely now when he goes home. You know, we see that a little bit here. Um, we we see how he just kind of he's missing his son. I mean, like you already said it. You know, it's it's he spent yeah. probably the whole summer with him. I don't him. think the episode focuses on that much, though, right? Like no, the, no, yeah. But yeah, I mean, once again, it it shows that every time. It's hard. It's hard for Ted. Like, there's a lot of stuff to look forward to when it comes to like the new season started. But yeah, he he misses his family. Um, and what I do like as well is going on on the episode. And we're we're not necessarily going to break down every single beat, right? But yeah. I think to part of the the underlying theme that I talked about is it mm -hmm. seems like the press and media are all picking Richmond to finish mm -hmm. last yes. on the yeah. season as it's about to start. And this happens yes. in real life, right? Like in sports, there's always predictions. There's entire segments talking about like, who do you think mm -hmm. is going to go to the Super Bowl and all this stuff. And, and yeah, like there's statistics that pick out who like pe the people vote mm -hmm. on who they think is going to fall last. And so there's this pressure on Richmond because and everyone's Becca. saying like, Hey, they're gonna suck just like they always like have been, right? Like I know, yeah. I know they got promoted, but they're in the, they're in the big leagues now, the Premier League where now, they've yeah. struggled in the past. So you know, yeah, yeah, I I I, I can feel you there. And then also, Becca has the pressure to put on Ted because he's like, you need to do. Where's our game plan? I don't want yeah. to lose to Rupert. I don't want that. And there's yep. so many times where like she wants to yell the f on him. But she does it. She holds back, you know, because it, it's yeah. She shows yeah. a little bit of aggression for sure in terms of like there's desperation and yeah. And, and you can see how that once again the media pressure yes. is impacting different characters in a different way. It impacts the players. It impacts the coaching staff. It impacts Rebecca once again, who is a competitor at heart, especially against Rupert. Yeah. Now that he he bought a, a team right in the same league. Mm. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah it, it once again the first episode just started. Starting with already, once again, an ideolo uh, ideology uh, conflict in terms of yeah. Ted believes, you know, I still don't concern myself with wins and losses, but, mm -hmm. you know, you are helming a football club. Like, you have to be a little yeah. bit competitive and have that fight. Exactly. And that's the thing, too, because I kind of felt like that. She wants to push this onto Ted, be like, you need to be competitive. You need to, you need to have a plan. Like, it's almost to where, like, he's – not saying he's gotten used to the, being casual – with his playing methods, but in a way he's gone casual where like, he's not yeah. aggressive. Like he doesn't, yeah, he's not like, well, an they don't have, yeah, they don't have Nate anymore. Right. Like Nate, yeah, Nate played Nate, a big role in, yeah. in the playmaking the, skills, the playmaking, the advantages yeah. that they had. So yeah, it's it, the season is kind of showing that, Hey, you know, there is a mission, there's an yeah. objective and, and Ted has to kind of challenge himself to stick to it. But I really like how later in the episode, we see a, a very uh, powerful moment where, you know, even Keely talks to Rebecca and, and mm -hmm. just goes over like, let Ted do Ted things. And then, yeah, cause you know, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, going back to where Nate, Nate actually uh, goes on camera yeah. first, Becca's watching with, uh, in, in the office as along uh, and as well, but furthermore into it, you know, we get to see Nate 
really talk shit to to uh to richmond and yeah really he goes say, into yeah. that mode right where he like yeah. he does that little spit thing well right before that yeah so right before yeah so right before that he actually goes because he gets so damn nervous he does that little spit thing he did last season except he did it when he stood down on the table and we're, everyone's like what the hell's going on then he spits and yeah. then he's he's almost know, having yeah. like a panic attack himself you know yeah like in a weird way yeah he he has one that he becomes this other person i think he's even ashamed of you know well, rupert's thing you know yeah i kind of well, remember I kinda, yeah. that, that goes back to episode uh, i'm sorry to season two where yeah. rebecca rebecca um uh says that you um you it was a did it was a thing that they said to build up his confidence yeah and i think she talked about like uh looking in the mirror and and Im- it, like imagining the person that is like holding you back and stuff like that and just basically like sh- like yelling at them or telling them something but then nate took it to the next level and yeah he in in the mirror he's not pretending to see someone else he's pretending to see the weaker side of himself yes then he like spits which is the the weaker side yeah yeah it's like the ultimate sign of this this spice right like spitting is is such a nasty thing um and so yeah he goes into this mode yeah and then uh you know we see that how it escalates here and how he cares so much about the media. He cares so oh, yeah. like driven. His life revolves around what people think about him. I'm just like, dude, why do you do that if you like you're ashamed of the person you're because I and again we kind of see this a little bit in this segment here. Uh and he takes shots at Richmond, he takes shots at Ted, he takes shots at all them. And um, and even uh even so though. You know, Becca gets upset. You need to answer this, Ted. You need to answer this. You need to add. You need to do something. We need to respond. And they do a response thing, except Ted does the, you know, the high and mighty. He does what rarely people would do, especially myself. He does, he stands tall and he doesn't go that, that low. He does not go from his class, his high class that he does. He's, he has really class. And it shows that in Twitter. It shows that because a lot of people say, well, look at this Wanka. You know, uh, look at this uh, Wank good Nate, you know, and how he's just – he has no class. He gets twisted around because Becca wanted him to to be more aggressive, be more like her, angry, mad. Uh, and Ted was Ted. Like you said already, Ted was Ted. Yeah, and he it made worked out in, it, and... it worked out in their favor. Yeah. He was he just made... like, oh, I'm surprised he didn't call me a stupid dumb American or like, you know, he... just stupid stuff like that. And Yeah, like is that yeah. the best you got? But he yeah. did it like he was. One of, one of the things I did love though was Nate says, come here, come here. Oh, come here, come here, come here. Look, stand right here, stand right here. This is dumb, dumb line. Or like he says oh, that like, yeah. oh, dude, that was, I was just, oh my God. I was, I was yeah. just laughing my butt. I was like, this is dumb, dumb line. You stand here. You stand here. This is dumb, dumb line. I love that. I don't care what anyone says. That was hilarious. Yeah, that cracked me up. His management yeah, style, man. dude, bro. But, he is. Yeah. He, you know, yeah. It's, cr- it's crazy to see that how he, the way he was treated, he's treating the people the way he was treated. Yeah. That's it. Crazy. Right. Yeah, I've seen it so many times. That's, that's what he yeah. knows makes him feel superior. Yeah, uh, that's, to that's, bring someone down, and it's it's yes, the opposite yeah. of of what Ted does, and him who, being there. Who Ted else loves is, who? Who else loves his assistant? Disco. Oh man. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, dude. He's cool. Yeah, he's funny, man. He's all like, "Yeah, Disco. This ain't mean to party, or this ain't a party." Even though my name, my name's Disco. He says something like that, some cheesy joke. Yeah. I thought that was cute. But uh, but yeah, and Ted yeah. and Ted when he's making jokes and he's. You know, he always does this. He's engaged with the press. Yeah. Like, he tells them to repeat something back. And, like, yeah. you know. How I, dumb are you, Ted? Yeah. It's <laughs> I like, love you that. Know, oh, it, man, it's, it's just awesome. the way that he does things. And I appreciate for a yeah. moment I thought on that. Because I agree. I agree yeah. with Rebecca's point. And you know me. Like, I'm a yeah. super, like, optimistic person. And, mm-hmm. and, and I I love Ted Lasso as a character because he, me too. he stands by a lot of the things that – I, I look up to be and but even in this episode I was conflicted in the sense of like yeah I understand Rebecca maybe maybe it's okay to get a little uh, a little more aggressive or, mm-hmm. or being able to talk back a little bit or make sure that you know you can't be fucked with all those things yeah um, exactly but then Ted Lasso does his thing and is like, I'm just glad that he as a character did his own thing and then yeah. the, the show respects that right like the, like he showed how rebecca came around mm-hmm. and, and understands uh and maybe that'll be a, a point of the theme still 
you know, in the later part, uh, because once again, at the end of the day, like there, yeah. we have seen Ted before very close to snapping. Like there was a, yeah. there was a scene in episode one, or I'm sorry, in season one where he, he was telling Jamie to cut the crap off because he was really getting frustrated. So Ted yeah. at the end of the day is a human, but yeah, of he's, he's a human that exemplifies the things that we should try a little bit harder to, to be yeah. able to do. So one of the things I really did love about this episode too, we actually got Keely, Keely. Oh my God, girl, she is on top of the world right now. She is on top of the world. Becca goes to her for lunch. I love it. I love me some Becca and Kaylee, uh, Keely time. I love it. And we get into her office here. Her office is like literally like it's like a not say a boring office, but like a dull office. And and yeah, it's a little dull. Except her, her. Office. yeah, her office, her is, office cool. is yeah. like boom, bamming Pink with colors, and, yeah. bamming, bamming with Keely style. And then we get Becca in there, and Becca and Keely, Keely's all like, "I'm I'm so busy. I scheduled crying time with you." And I'm like, "What the hell? Is that? Why is she crying?" And she's, like, "I scheduled crying time with you." <laughs> and then she's all like, "I double booked you." <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> Becca holds her. I'm just I'm falling in love, man. I'm falling in love with the. The, the heartfulness we're getting in this and um and then also we first get a glimpse speaking of the roy kent uh we first get a full shot of the new jersey that we're getting that new navy jersey with the red oh, yeah. stripes right i'm loving that jersey that jersey is sick that's probably the next one we're gonna buy right lex that's yeah. probably for sure like yeah. once that comes on sale uh and so Furthermore, into the, uh, I know we keep going back and forth to the beginning and the and the end of this episode, in the middle of this episode, but um, we're jumping back and forth here, and then we get the team talking about why are we last or like why are we, you know we're last place you know and all this stuff and we're, we're you know it just it kind of sucks, but Ted always gives up the positive note. He says, "Don't worry, we're the underdog. Don't worry, you know we're the underdog." And then he has, uh, I think he has beer. Why don't we have overdog or like he has oh, like yeah, a cheesy? Yeah. yeah, I love that man. And then Roy Kent's coming in, like saying the simple jokes, like I know I'm not as smart as as Nate or as as a you know random uh, drills like Nate does or like the random playmaking as Nate, but you know we're still got to be on top of the game and we got to do like the uh, what do you call it? Um, yeah, yeah, just different playmaking here. And then also what we get in this episode, we totally forget, right? We totally forget um in this episode so becca is actually looking for the team she's like where's the team at um which i thought we really need to highlight here uh so the one thing that i really want to highlight is how inspiring how amazing the messages are in this show in, in these episodes for the most part and ted gets the team they're done practicing or they get done practicing early. Ted gets a team. We're like, we're going to go, uh, uh, you know, um, and everything. So we're going to, yeah, it's kind of random. And this is because he sees yeah. the negative effect of the media uh, and the pressure. Of the media. Them, Everyone's right? they're, they're like. They're not practicing right. Like, yeah, not every, like every, the vibe, the momentum, it's all over the place. It's, it's like just not depressing, but it's like sad. It's just like, damn, you know, everything's yeah. bad. So Ted takes his team and they go onto the sewer and, you know, they're taking the sewer guide. And 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 um, it's kind of funny because um, uh, you know I think it was Sam or was it no it wasn't Sam that someone questioned Ted they're like why are we here you know what wh why are we here um, why would you take your why would you take your kid to the sewer and um, and Ted is like Ted is literally saying you know like well my son actually on the way over here across this uh, across the sea he actually watched uh, he was watching movies on a on a um, on an iPad or a laptop. Uh, to his neighbor because he didn't have anything to watch no movies on his laptop so he was he actually watched it well come to find out it of course happens in a sewer right so the or sewer the store if you haven't seen it, it the, the, sorry guys <laughs> if you haven't seen it but uh, the climax of the movie the horrorness of it happens a lot in the sewers and so uh so ted is ted's son henry actually gets so scared and that he he's like man you know what he's so scared of the sewers so ted takes him to conquer his fears you know, he's like, well, why don't we go take a job in the sewers? And I love this because, again, we go back to storytelling. We go back. Yeah, I love it. So anyways, so um, Ted uh, explains that or uh, Ted explains my son wanted to or we wanted to conquer his fear. And Roy Kent's, oh, that that's some that's smart. You know, that's that fucking that's damn smart. And um, and it kind of makes sense to where this is all. All like he says it in a, in a different way. I'm getting, I'm going, yeah. Vulgar, well, but he says, all, like, it's it's like shit, and it's yeah, like it shit, it just flow, it needs flow. to, it needs to go, yeah, yeah, it needs to pass, right? Like, we need to, um, we need to separate that from our lives and just let yeah. it flow, uh, yeah, pretty much. 
Yeah, and, and, I, and I really love how it really touches up on that because of how much negativity there is. Do not let negativity ruin or run your life. I'll say that. Do not let the press in this case because they're they're celebrities or they're, they're you know they're players. Yeah, no, do they're... not let the press or the media run your life. And I love that. I love that because Ted always comes out with these hidden messages and Beard supports him all the way. Uh, and it's just, I love this. I really do. A great, great inspiring message there. But yeah, I'll say that overall, again, we go back to the episode being that's why I gave it an 8.5 because, you know, a lot of stuff like this, even with our YouTube channel here, we have these drought seasons to where we won't get enough attraction. And you have that doubt in your mind. Am I doing it right? Am I good enough? Am I good enough to do YouTube videos? Am I good enough to talk about movies? Am I good enough to talk about Ted Lasso? Am I good? You get into this mindset, but you cannot let that drive you, guys. You cannot let that drive you. You cannot let that ruin your life. Oh, am I going to get that job? Well, you don't know unless you try. You have to apply yourself, you know? You have to apply for that job. Otherwise, doubt will always consume you and kill you. But yeah, I'll say that. But I mean, overall, I love this episode. I love the messages we got out of here. And um, and yeah, but sad to say we did get a Twitter photo. Um, and I like that. There was a joke, another joke again, where uh, is, is that you, Roy Kent? Go fuck off. Or he, I think he says something like that. Or I don't know. I don't, can't remember what he says. But he says something like that. It's just hilarious. Cracks me up. Sorry for the cuss words, guys. This is an explicit episode. But yeah, I just, I love, I love me so Roy Kent. I love me. I'm not going to lie. That, uh, he is hilarious. He can't, he, it's, it's jokes, man. It's, it's these random joke one-liners that really hit me all the time. Yeah. And it's funny too, because I never thought like a lot of the Ted Lasso dad jokes would hit me with that because I'm very particular and very, um, yeah. I'm, I'm very, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, picky when it comes to comedy. I really am. Lex knows yeah. this. I really am. It, it has to. Yeah. But all right, guys, a uh, question is for you. Once again, moviegoers out there, thank you for sticking with us. If you did talk about spoilers, if you did listen to us on spoilers, thank you so much for listening to us, guys. And a uh, question is for you. What did you think of this episode? What did you think of episode one, guys? Moviegoers out there, tell us, fans, what did you think of episode one? Did it exceed your expectations? Or were you just like, this was a boring episode? You know, um, just put on comments down below. What did you think? And what's your anticipating for this season, guys? Put on comments down below. Remember, no spoilers on the comments, guys. We'll be getting a little bit of that. I've tried to delete them as fast as I could. So no spoilers, guys. Thank you so much. As always, I'm your host, Ryan D. A. Clone Ryan 680. And this was Slacks. Take care, everyone. Catch you there, guys. Stay safe, San Antonio. Peace.